Yes, guys, you too can have beautiful Easter lilies in your garden. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to plant them, cure for them, pests, as well as a bonus as to how to have the blooms last for a longer time. If you've never been here before, my name is Marlene. Welcome to my home and garden channel where it's all about flowers and gardening. So you may have gotten Easter lilies or bought them for yourself in these beautiful containers at Easter time. And I just love those gorgeous colors that they, you know, they put them in. And of course the lilies themselves are just absolutely gorgeous. And oftentimes they get thrown out once they start to fade, but you can actually plant them and have them come back year after year. And I'm going to show you how to do that further down in the video. But just speaking of lilies on a whole, lilies, you know, they belong to, um, it's a large family and there are different types of lilies. These Easter ones, you can see that they're more trumpet shaped and that the blooms, they, um, they point off to the side and they're not to be confused with like your Asiatic lilies that point upwards, usually come in many different colors and they're not as trumpet shaped. The leaves are very similar though, so it can be a little confusing sometimes. We also have these beautiful calla lilies and they are called lilies, but they are actually not true lilies. They are perennials and they're wonderful. You know, they make a wonderful addition to your garden and they do come in different colors, but again, you know, they are not true lilies. So as far as lilies go, they are actually good to grow from zones five through 11. If you are not sure about what your growing zone is, you can always check and see, you know, what it is. They have a beautiful fragrance. As you can see, we have some um, ants pollinating in there. You know, they attract pollinators as well to your garden. So that's an additional plus. And of course, you know, they are a mainstay as far as Easter decorations go. You pretty much always see them. So I'm going to show you how to plant them, whether it be from, you know, the ones in containers like these, you know, when they're finished, or if you wanted to get them from bulbs. And just to say that this video is a part of an open collaboration hosted by the Buckeye Girls Decor at home with Lisa Lisa and 11 other lovely ladies, including me. And I'll be linking our channels in the description box below. Each person will be doing their own presentation as to their, you know, contribution towards Easter. So over here now we have some bulbs. I got these from my garden and they may look a little different if you order them from catalog online. But you can see that, you know, you have the roots at the bottom showing there and a little bit of the stem at the top. And I dug these up because I wanted to move them to a different area. And I waited until they dried all the way down. You'll, if you're going to put them in a container, you want to make sure it has holes in the bottom because they do need rich but well-drained soil. But just to ensure that the soil doesn't run out, I typically add a coffee filter in the bottom so that way, you know, it doesn't all go out. But at the same time, you know, um, you have moisture being retained and you can use your potting soil mix, whatever brand you like. This is the one I'm using here. If you are going to be planting them in the flower beds and you'll want to get some garden soil. And of course, you'll always want to make sure that you have some mulch. This is actually pine bark mulch, one of my favorites, but there are different kinds that you can use. And I have my trowel here and I'll be linking some of these items in the description box below where you can get them on Amazon. So you can always check those out as well, too. You want to place your bulb upright in an upright position, the pointy part at the top. And then you're going to go in and add your potting soil. And if you're putting it in your flower bed, you can always add maybe some compost in or even for the potted ones as well too, if you have that to add in as well. And then you'll want to make sure that you're going to fill it and leave about at least an inch above the lid or the lip of the container. And then you go in and you fill, you know, you cover it over with your mulch. And this actually helps, you know, the moisture to be retained as well as it keeps it, you know, protected from, you know, any excess cold in the winter time. And, you know, it keeps weeds away. So mulching is very, very good. And they really, really like that too. So once you've planted that, then you're going to go ahead and, you know, water it, make sure the water, you know, soaks all the way through. 
and then once it's soaked all the way through you should see some running out at the bottom so that way you know that you hit all the little dry pockets in there so you are good to go and if you're going to do it from the um from the pots what you want to do is to make sure that, you know, of course, your flowers have faded. You want to enjoy those first. And then you look for the leaves to start yellowing a little bit because, you know, that photosynthesis is going down. So it has stored more than enough energy to carry it forward. And this right here, it's not one of those that, you know, turn yellow on me. I'm just moving one from one space to another. So I thought I'd just use this one to show you. But you would do it in the exact same way if you are going to move it from, say, the container to your flower bed or maybe to a larger pot and we're just going to top it off here and if you have made it this far in the video i certainly hope that you'll give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the information so far and if you want to know more about you know gardening any little tips that i have to give you or just to show you what i'm doing or sometimes I may even arrange fresh flowers, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell twice so you will never miss an upload. So I'm just topping it off here and the same rule applies. You'd want to make sure that you're leaving at least, you know, an inch once you've put all your soil in above the lid and then you would go in and you add your mulch to it. Just making sure that it's fully covered all around. And they'll be quite happy with that and then you'll just water them as I did in the previous um, section. And in the springtime, if they're in your flower bed, this is what it looks like in early spring when they're coming up. You can see they look nice and healthy and you can see that they have multiplied. Initially at first, you know, you'll get a few blooms, but over time you'll see that, you know, it becomes more and more as they, you know, multiply and they get enough energy and all of that. You can see I have some pretty with some other, um, some other types of flowers as well. And then once they have faded and, you know, the leaves have started to turn yellow, usually at about this stage, I'll cut them back. You don't have to, you can always wait for a little bit longer, but sometimes you may want to have other flowers in your garden. So you want to cut them down at this point so they can enjoy other colors or plant something that's larger. So that way it will kind of hide them so you won't see the yellowing of the leaves. And you'll just go in and use a, a nice, clean, sharp um, clipper like I have here. And I'll also link that below for you as well. And you just go in and you take them out. Sometimes you may notice that there's some little pest on there. In this case, these look are looking like weevils. And you can just go ahead and get some insecticidal soap and spray them either before or after you cut them off. Just make sure that you fully um, soak the leaves out so that we don't have to worry too much about them. And then, you know, once you've done your planting and whatever it is that you need to do, you can just enjoy your beautiful lilies when they come up. They just make such a wonderful addition to your garden. The blooms last for typically for two weeks. So it's good that you have multiple blooms that they don't all open at the same time. So it's continuous, you know, you have one set fading and then they'll come through again. And you can see the little raindrops on there. They enjoyed a nice, nice um, shower um, of rain. So over here now, I'm just showing you some beautiful purple flowers. Um, there are different types here, but some of these make good additions to blend in in your flower bed with your um your easter lilies so over here now um, i'm just showing you these and what i'm wanting to say is that if you wanted them to last longer then what you would do is they say you can just go in and snip off the yellow anthers with the pollen on top there and that's going to have your flower last for a longer time i personally like to have them you know stay there because i just like to enjoy the contrast of the color and once the flowers have faded if you don't cut them off you'll see that the seed you know the seed head starts to form there you can grow them from seed but bear man is going to take a longer time for you to get blooms because it's going to meet, meet a couple more years for them to mature enough and give you flowers so i hope you got some great information from this and be sure to check out the video at the end and any other ones that you may see there that might interest you. But these are just wonderful flowers. So if it's Easter time and you're watching this in this season, I hope that you will have, you know, a wonderful Easter season. I hope you get to try some of these. You know, they just come back every year. They're so worth it. They make such a beautiful addition to your garden. 
And just to say that, you know, um, apart from my gardening videos, I do live videos on Saturdays, most Saturdays. And then we talk about various topics, you know, things that are topical and seasonal. So be sure to stop by and check that out. I certainly thank you for staying with me today. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care.